Zim? Uh, yes. Hi. I have a quick question. I'm wondering if you've come across instances of some Buddhist scholars not uh, criticizing the creative use of these formulas. Uh, you know, so my question is like, is there, can you be too creative in other words? Like, is there some examples of people not liking what other people are doing with the, the, these formulas? Oh, if, within the, te if, if they don't like, if, if, if they don't accept it within yeah. the tradition. That's a good, that's a neat question. Um, you know, I mean, there are a lot, I think, I think there were a lot of texts that they didn't record, mm -hmm. that they didn't keep. That, I mean, this was the way, the way it was done. The, the, the texts were pretty much alive. And then, you know, they, they kept whatever they, in, in, in making a collection, you, you kind of, a lot of the texts were created for the collection, coming out of the collection and, and continuing to articulate the logic of the collection. And you could have done that anyhow. So, so to answer your question, um, I mean, I, I know of scholars who are resistant to this kind of approach, but of, of early Buddhist uh, scholars or reciters or whatever, whatever they were, I don't know, I'll keep an eye for, uh, for that. It's, it's an interesting uh, direction to think of. Yeah, okay. there should be some evidence for that somewhere. Okay, thanks. Alex. Yeah, I, I get the point of the formulas if you turn to texts like you do, some Yutanikaya particularly. But uh, you yourself stress the fact that sutta should be read as literature. And I'm wondering, um, doesn't a focus on small texts that foreground the formulas and the development of formulas um, distract from the fact that there are other suttas that really do have a literary quality with quite elaborate um, you know, narratives? I'm thinking about the Samanya Pala Sutta. It's of course full of uh, formulas, but it also has a very nice narrative arc at the same time. So I, I've, I've, I've written about that. I mean, there's a 2017 article of mine in uh, Journal of Religion on the, these narrative dimensions, especially in the first uh, Banavara of the Diga Nikaya, including the Samanyapala and the Brahmajala and, and the whole, the way they reapply the, the main formula. Um, and, um, and that's in the book too, part of that. Of that. And, and, and really the, the I mean, I don't know, as I said, you wanted to read the Vachagota stuff. So it took us in the Samyutta Nikaya direction and it connected to the philosophical orientation, but really the play of formulas, um, like what Mark says to me, you're talking all the time about Mark Allen, you're, you're talking about this literary stuff in the Majima and in the Digan, I can see it there, but talk to me about the Samyutta and show me how it relates to the doctrinal stuff when they're really seriously doing stuff that relates to meditation. So this was actually in a sense, a more advanced stage. And the earlier, I mean, the when you look at the Diga and you look at the Majima, there's so many discourses that are just, you know, playing with the formulas in this very beautiful way. Um, and that's where the argument starts, setting, a, setting that as a kind of stage in which we can later explore the more doctrinal materials, but understanding that overall the context is literary. Thank you. And thank you for reading the Agivacha uh, with us. I mean, that's uh, much appreciated. Great. So we'll, we yeah. have time for one last question from Nancy Lin. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. I, yeah, please. Sorry to go a little over time, but this actually follows up on Alex's question about the literary aspects of your discussion, um, which is that, um, would you say that, that you could argue that there are literary dimensions to these formulas, whether within the formulas themselves or how they are used? So, and that seems to be where you're going, but I, I just, I was thinking of this from the seminar, which I sat in yesterday, Alex's seminar, and also the examples you gave today. So one of these is um, Majima Nikaya 72, where, um, you know, Vacha comes and asks, well, do you have this view? Do you have this view? And every time the answer is no. And finally, you know, the, the Buddha replies and says, you know, um, what, none of these that qualifies a view, you know, I, I've removed all those, I've renounced all that. And then he says, ditam mihi etam, right? This, this was seen or this was viewed to kind of right. push that pun a little bit more. And so we talked in the seminar yesterday about how that 
is a kind of play of language um, that's right. captured in the formula. And the other right. thing that I was thinking of from your examples is um, when a formula is taken of what the Buddha understands or what the Buddha sees, and then it's sort of negated, it's flipped to say in another instance, well, this is what the non-Buddhist teachers don't see. This is what they don't get. And just the, the very use of that and kind of turning it and flipping it, um, we could call it you know, repetition with a difference so that right. the kind of you know, audience for this, the, the community for the, these texts has this kind of literary pleasure of seeing something familiar that has then been flipped in another way. So I guess, you know, I want to ask you if, if you also consider those to be literary uses or literary aspects of these formulas apart from, you know, other kinds of literary aspects of the can that we could look at such as narrative and so forth. Beautiful, thanks. Um, so, so certainly that this dittam, uh, dittam is it hetam or uh, in the in the Agi Vachagota, that's a beautiful uh, reworking of the kind of play on the notion of ditti. I think I wrote something ab ab about that because that that part of the argument appears in, in in my book. But that's a very good example. Um, and just to say, I have a student who's working on all these um, actually materials between the the suttas and the Atakata. And she exactly identifies all these breaks in the formulas that change your expectation that uh, happens with Ananda and the Buddha many times where um, is exact, I mean, and, and then exactly those breaks is where the Attakata will jump in and say, look, something here is happening and add another story. So, um, and then, I mean, there are lots of nice examples of this, like, like when a Buddha will come up to, to a, a sick monk and, uh, and say, Kachite uh, kamaniam, kachi apaniam, kachi dukhavedana. Anyhow, I won't go through the whole thing, but I hope you're holding out okay. You're take, you're you're all right, and and then they'll say he'll say, and he's so the Buddha asks kachi dukhavedana, pati kamanti. I hope your 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 painful feelings are are going away, not getting stronger. And the answer will be no. Everything's not okay. Balha me, and that little me, but balha me dukhavedana, abhi kamanti. So I'm having these powerful, and the me it serves as a kind of evam also, but it also it's a personal evam. So there's a lot of these very sensitive work reworkings and and breaking of the formula and and really with with these very subtle subtle techniques and i think that the the poly language is permeated with this and just to say you know there's music to it there's rhythm you know we've really been talking we're we've been um pretty protestant you know thinking about the meaning of, of the, the, the text, you know, there's, there are many other dimensions that the texts are working on and also should be kind of kept in mind for body. Well, um, so th thank you so much, uh, Tari. This has been a really uh, rich and, um, and stimulating talk. Um, so uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your weekend. Uh, and thanks so much for everybody who came and uh, uh, participated today. So. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh -huh.